I think uh, from the technical committee, I would like to thank them very much. Uh, I think uh, this uh, I felt was a bigger patient than all the patients it's been uh, seeing all these days. Uh, but uh, but I think his um, support team and the uh, committee's support has been tremendous uh, uh, towards whatever we want to achieve in the last uh, three weeks or so. Uh, and I would like to thank all of them for all the support extended. And I think uh, as as we discussed uh, at the earlier press conference when they were appointed, uh, there were some. Uh, task we had uh, already worked on and I think uh, uh, on the on the first class structure which we have almost completed uh, the structure and uh, passed on to them to look at it uh, and as he mentioned uh, considering the current situation I think uh, when there is a uh, bubble uh, in which a lot of the cricketers have to train. I think it makes a lot of sense to have uh, a pool and a new facility at Kettaram where all the facilities are located in one place and uh, the movement uh, movement is reduced to the maximum. Uh, and at the same time, uh, there were uh, the players' contracts which we were working on uh, uh, with the committee and the uh, SLC uh, on the budgets uh, which they had to work on uh, and we, we worked on a format uh, uh, and with the selectors, coach uh, and uh, Tom overlooking the entire process of the ranking and the evaluation. Uh, uh, we, we managed to put a system in place where we feel uh, it will be very good for the future. Uh, not to depend on uh, human assessment uh, too much and we want to try and improve on that as much as possible in, in the years to come and to make it a more foolproof method rather than what has been there in the past where they look at someone's face and then keep players happy by giving certain contracts just to uh, keep them away and keep them on uh, a certain uh, party side uh, and I, I think it's important to try and make it a more robust uh, sort of uh, system. And uh, I, I would uh, also like to uh, uh, get Tom to do a little bit of a presentation on what aspects we really wanted to look at but there was much more detail in which uh, we, we had to do the assessments considering the fact that uh, uh, we didn't have much cricket last year, but they had to go back almost two years to get the performances. But co co considering those performances, looking at the future, I think we have to take some harsh decisions uh, because the future and some of the past performances, uh, though uh, they came in as something which is uh, uh, quite important and the majority shows as per the uh, as per the system uh, is uh, more focused on that uh, but this particular year we had to uh, deviate a little bit from that to make it more balanced but uh, for sure uh, in the year years to come this this system will uh, have a much more robust and a accurate sort of outcome uh, in the future so I uh, don't intend talking very much, but I, I will hand you over to Tom uh, to explain uh, and go through the process and the monetary part uh, is what uh, is done through the budgets of SLC and uh, I think Ashley can check in once the budgets are compared to last year and how, how the payments, uh, you, you will see how the players are benefiting so much more from last year. Uh, through through this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Aravinda and, and Prof, and uh, hello to everyone out there in the virtual media world. Um, I think firstly I'd like to uh, just make the point that this has been a, a long and a very considered process in re-evaluating the way that Sri Lankan cricket 
uh, offer their annual contracts to their professional buyers. Um, there was a lot of uh, work done in, in exploring how other cricket boards around the world go through this process uh, and uh, a lot of that information was brought into what we've come up with um, which is Sri Lanka's uh, contract system uh, for this year and moving forward. As Aravinda uh, alluded to, um, we're trying to do a very transparent uh, and very consistent process where the three selectors uh, and the head coach have got all the information and, uh, and it's a, a thorough and a fair uh, system for all the players, uh, not only the senior players, but all the players that are, that, that are possibly going to represent Sri Lanka in that year. If we go to the first slide, um, one of the major differences uh, for you to consider uh, this year against previous years is the number of national contracts that are on offer. So 24 players are offered a contract where last year uh, it was um, around 32, I believe. So it's a considerable reduction in number of contracts offered. There will also be offered um, a what we call a domestic development contract. And with that, it's up to six players. Kindly, kindly mute yourself. You will have to unmute when you do have a question as well. Okay. So there'll be the development domestic uh, contracts. We're up to six players. It doesn't have to be six, but up to six players, the selectors will consider offering the best performing uh, domestic players and those uh, players that just miss out on a national contract. And the, the aim is to have those contracts uh, focused on players under the age of 25. Then we have the incremental contracts, and that basically is the players that haven't received a contract throughout a contract year um, but play enough games, uh, whether it be test cricket or whether it be ODIs or T20, to qualify for a contract. Uh, the overall scoring system is based on uh, 50 uh, points for performance, 20 for fitness, 10 for leadership, 10 for professionalism and 10 for future potential and adaptability. I'll go through those in some more detail for you. So the player contracts are broken up into four categories, A, B, C and D categories. In each category there will be six players and that will be broken up into two as an A1 or, an a, uh, or a B1 or a C1 or a D1, two in A2 and two in A3. And those categories uh, have a, a, a slight financial difference within that main uh, group, A, B, C or D. The player ranking uh, assessment mechanism, the performance ranking mechanism is out of 50 marks. So as Aravinda alluded to in his introduction, this year has been a very unique year for the selectors to make a, a, an assessment on the players. Uh, 2020 with COVID uh, really have an impact not only here in Sri Lanka but around the world and on a lot of different businesses. They had to be a little bit more uh, creative in the way that they assessed players. So in this one-off year they felt it was important to also include 2019 in their assessments. So there's two years of performances that they have taken into consideration because in 2020 they only played 11 international matches where in 2020 uh, sorry in 2019 there was 42 so there's quite a considerable uh, uh, difference in the volume of cricket that uh, the selectors had to choose from uh, looking at the physical ranking mechanism this is obviously a, an important area for uh, Sri Lankan cricket to improve on their overall fitness, not only to have the players performing better on the field, but to keep them on the field. We have seen a number of players struggle with fitness with injuries. A lot of that's to do with the, 
the, the condition uh, hasn't been as what it uh, what it could be. So this is a, a focus. So there are measures that are very much part of this ranking mechanism, and 20 points allocated both 10 for skin faults, and there obviously at certain levels where you get 10 points for maximum uh, uh, skin fold if you're 75 or under, and then it's scaled down to just the two points if you're ranging between 83 and 85. And anything outside of that, you're not getting registered with any points towards your national contract. With regards to the two kilometre time trial, again, the same sort of sliding method. If you're under 835, you're getting maximum points of 10. Otherwise, you're losing out on points towards your national contract. Leadership has also been taken into consideration along with seniority. So leadership, there is a five point recognition and with seniority, there's another five point recognition. Uh, the, the selectors along with the coach have made those assessments and, and allocated those points towards uh, the, the, both, both those areas. Firstly, with the seniority, that's related to players and the number of games they've played for Sri Lanka. So whether it be test cricket, ODI cricket, or T20 cricket. Uh, a point allocation is as follows, one point for test, half point for ODI and T20 cricket. If you see on this page, it allows you to understand what that all means. So five marks if you're getting 100 points. So someone like an Angelo Matthews, for instance, has played 90 test matches, that's 90 points, plus he's played an abundance of white ball cricket as well in ODI and T20 cricket, he comfortably gets five marks from a seniority point of view. I think um, it, it's self-explanatory as it slides down. Players, a number of players fall in the other categories, but the majority, interesting enough, on the contracts uh, haven't played uh, enough, enough international cricket to qualify for that, that above 50 mark. Other lead, leadership categories which were considered is obviously holding previous leadership roles as captain. So we've got a number of players that have, have captained uh, uh, various formats for Sri Lanka. So that was taken into consideration, along with the other important things around leadership, you know, communication, selflessness, and uh, empathy, and all those critical areas that make up the right dynamic and culture within a national side. Around the professionalism ranking mechanism, that's out of 10. And again, that is, that's based in two main areas. Uh, one being the adherence to player co code of conduct, which is not only the uh, code of conduct at the ICC level, but that's at Sri Lankan cricket level as well. Uh, and other professional endeavours, ethics and values. So five marks for both of those areas, which accumulates to 10. So around the, the, the first part being code of conduct is self-explanatory. The other part, professionalism, um, is again, um, pretty self-explanatory around the areas of uh, punctuality, empathy, stand, uh, stands playing group, mutual respects and relationships, all those things that are important markers in trying to create a strong culture for uh, the future of Sri Lankan cricket. And finally, the future potential and adoptability ranking mechanism is 10 points for this. So scoring in three uh, areas, long-term potential, so someone that the selectors feel that has a, a, a long-term um, uh, opportunity to play for Sri Lanka and influence their performances over a long period of time. Uh, a high level of skill along with elite professionalism is another area and also uh, an area where it's important is that not only players that have the ability to dominate at home in, in whatever format they're playing or all three formats, but also have the ability to showcase those skills and dominate away from home. With regards to the development uh, contracts, develop, uh, domestic development contracts, again, as I touched on right at the, the beginning of this brief, um, that's a, the main takeaway here for you to consider is that a player um, can only have one of these contracts for up to three years. 
um, and that, that may happen in a, a staggered period of time or it may happen three years in a row. But it's recognising those players have just missed out on national contracts but are, are players of interest for the selectors to consider going forward. And it also can be a player that uh, may be you know, a, a player that is fitting a, a skill gap that the selectors feel that may be uh, occurring in a year or two's time. So they're making sure they're preparing players for the future in various roles within the Sri Lankan team. Uh, the incremental contract, again touched on at the, at the beginning of this brief, um, just to give you an understanding, a maximum of 10 points is required. So the uh, a test match is worth three points, ODI and T20 are worth one point. So if you accumulate 10 points, you then register for a Category D3 contract. So you, you enter the contract system, uh, which is only fair and reasonable for players that uh, have started to play and represent their country that they get recognised with a contract. So that's, that's again, a, a new um, introduction to the contract system. Uh, with regards to the payment to other squad members, as you would know, uh, with COVID, uh, a lot of the national teams around the world have to travel with larger squads. Uh, and one of the major differences um, in this contract offer is that every player in that extended squad if they're not in the playing 11, will still get paid 25% of the match fee uh, in all the three formats. So recognition for their contribution towards the team around any team, any game or any series uh, and then allowing them to prepare accordingly. So they're making sure that they are knocking on the door and giving the, the, the selectors the headache that we want them to have. Uh, I'll pass this uh, area over to uh, Ashley, our CEO, to explain the, the, the financial side of the, of the um, details. Yeah. Moving forward, I think uh, it's uh, necessary for us to uh, enlighten you all of the model which we have in. And uh, when it comes to Sri Lanka cricket, uh, beginning of every year, we incorporate uh, a certain amount for their payments uh, in our annual budget. <coughs> And uh, we make a 10% increase over the previous years. And there was a new model which was proposed by uh, the technical committee. Based on the, uh, the, the model which was proposed, we have uh, broken the players into four categories. And each category has three brackets. And that was the amount which uh, is uh, on the slide, which we have uh, paid the players. And if you make a comparison with the previous year, if you go on to the next slide, you will get an idea how much of money we have allocated uh, in the year 2021. And that's the amount which was in 2019-2020 contracts, where we have allocated 259 million. Uh, and uh, in the year 2021, we have allocated 282 million, whereas a variance of 23 million uh, the player pay, uh, for the player payments and uh, the technical committee was also of the view that we should also put some more money on the field where we recognize the their efforts and their performance not individual performance as a team performance so based on that there are certain things which we have not incorporated in the budget but nevertheless Sri Lanka Vika took a decision so I know there have been a lot of speculation out in the media saying that we have cut down on the player payment. So that's the reason we thought we'll give you all a breakdown what we are offering the players as uh, as incentives as well. In 2020, uh, the domestic player fee is what is being uh, highlighted here. And in 2021, the, the new uh, structure which has been proposed by the technical committee, which needs to be certified by the membership, at the FGN and the player payments which has been proposed by them, we would be having a variance of 254 million. And this is something again, as I indicated before, which we have not incorporated, but we will definitely allocate that kind of money, provided we proceed with the structure which has been proposed by the technical committee. 
Uh, when it comes to the national test match fees, I think if you make a comparison with all the other countries, I think we are in par. Other than uh, a few countries, uh, India, uh, Australia, and England, the rest of the countries, I think uh, we are paying more uh, uh, as player fees uh, for a year for a for a match for a player. And uh, the test match fees, uh, the committee also felt that we need to give more weightage to us. Uh, uh, for test matches, mainly due to the fact that we want to encourage the players to participate in test cricket. There are so many uh, leagues which are taking place in the world, so therefore, in order to encourage the players to take part in test cricket, uh, they also proposed an increase of $500 more for a test match. And the ODI match fees will remain as it is, that uh, would be $5,000 uh, $5, and $3,000 for T20 matches. 4,000, 4,000 and 3,000 uh, as T20 match fee uh, for ODIs and the T20. Uh, we also have taken into consideration uh, uh, for as incentives for taking part in the ICC tournaments as well as the, the ACC tournament. And that's the uh, amount which we offered in 2019 and 2021. There was a participation fees which was offered. That's $300, which we decided to keep uh, $300,000. Whereas in 2021, for the T20 World Cup, we would be paying the same amount. And there was an amount which was uh, introduced in 2019, which was taken off uh, because the committee felt that we need to. Uh, uh, ensure that the players get qualified to the semi-finals and winning of the semi-finals and the finals, they have uh, basically increased the amounts uh, uh, when compared with the 2019 figures which was offered. Uh, there was something which was uh, not reflecting in our previous agreement uh, when it comes to the winning of the series. Uh, there was a payment which was made only of beating the, the first four rank uh, teams. But this time uh, the committee felt that we need to also encourage them to beat the teams below our rank and uh, put more money rather than recognizing the individual efforts and making a seniority payment to pay the incentive to uh, the, the team in order to win matches and win series. So, so that our rankings would automatically go up once you start winning the series with uh, the, the low rank teams as well as the upper rank teams. This was again in 2019, the comparison and the 2000, uh, 21 winning series, the, the comparisons which we have made, you can see the difference versus the 2019. If uh, there was a uh, there was a clause which was introduced earlier, actually in 2019-15, we were going to introduce in 2021, which was taken off. Uh, we were to uh, actually it was not there before, uh, just correctly, but uh, subsequently we decided to introduce in 2021 because our rankings were dropping. And there were no, uh, the, the committee felt that there shouldn't be any deductions made for losing any series. Again, a comparison, uh, what has been made uh, as a win bonus comparison with the previous year in 2019 and 20 and 2021. You can see the, the difference uh, when it comes to beating a uh, rank one team, you will end up getting $25,000 more and by beating a second uh, rank team, you will get more $12,500 uh, more and also the other ranks, other ranking teams, you will end up uh, uh, getting more money by, uh, by uh, uh, which uh, you wouldn't have got paid in the previous agreements. There was no win bonus in for T20 series uh, 
uh, and the committee felt that it needs to be introduced and these are the amounts which was uh, uh, drafted in, uh, into the agreements uh, in the year 2021. In the previous year, 2019 and 20, we didn't have a big bonus uh, and, a, and uh, the winning of a series was not recognized, but the committee felt that uh, all three formats should be given the same uh, recognition and therefore they wanted us to include this uh, into the big bonus as well for T20s. Seniority payment, uh, which was there, has been drafted, uh, in, which was there in 2019 and 20, has been taken off, mainly due to the fact uh, that the committee felt that all the players should be treated equally when they get onto the field. And so therefore, so seniority payment, which was drafted in, into the module, when the evaluations have been done uh, for the players uh, 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 and when they were categorizing the players that was taken and drafted it into the module so that uh, they could get based on their seniority levels they could get recognized uh, uh, of uh, which category you, sh you should fall into you get more marks by categorizing them uh, on the seniority basis This was also there in the YDCC series in 2019-20, uh, which has been taken off as, as I indicated to you all. It has been uh, incorporated into the uh, and taken into consideration when the evaluation of players have been done, uh, when the categorization of the players. That's another thing which has been taken off the seniority payment of the players because they felt that the equal uh, the, the, all the players should be treated equally when they get onto the field. Those are the player rankings, player gradings uh, as per the recommendation of the committee uh, that which comprised of the selectors, the head coach, uh, and and also. Uh, Tom Moody as coming in as an observer. So basically based on their recommendation, the categorization of the players have been done and they have been uh, adopted into four uh, categories. And the top category, there are six players. And the second category, there are six players, six, 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 that altogether 24 players have been categorized. And also they have been categorized into different uh, 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 brackets as well. Thank you. Our Krida Puatsa, Krida Vedasatan, Narabanda, the Papare.com YouTube channel, subscribe, bell icon, click.